the undisturbed chamber and the grave goods that were found in another uh, in the area. Give us a uh, Hey there, you. Me? Yes, you. Do you have a plot point that needs explaining? Some backstory that the reader needs to know, even though all the other characters in the scene do not want to play along. Please explain. I am not programmed to respond in that area. Well, you're in luck, my friend, because the problem to all your answers is right here in this bit of lotl. Introducing the special Acme brand, Wooden Exposition. Yes, with a wooden exposition, you do not need to go through all the trouble to craft the dialogue in a believable way. With one swig of this elixir, your characters will be able to stand there expositing at each other in the most unnatural, yet narratively convenient way imaginable, saving you both time and trouble. Acme Brand, Wooden Exposition. Putting the log in dialogue. Oh yeah, we'll take a dozen. Greetings, good storytellers. I am the artful narrator, and it is my privilege to welcome you to learning the tropes of writing. Through the transparent partition of the fourth wall, those enigmatic outsiders known as the audience watch the story unfold before them. But... Without proper context, the audience lacks the knowledge to fully understand the events taking place in the narrative. And so it was. That exposition was created. Hey, uh, listen, do you think you can explain to me, like, why I'm dressed like this, and what those big words in the sky were all about, and, like, where we are in time? <gasps> now, when we think of exposition, the first things that come to mind are often the times when it was so badly done that it was painfully hilarious to listen to or sometimes just plain painful. Sokka, my only brother, we constantly roam these icy South Pole seas, and yet never do we find anything fulfilling. However, this merely represents one end of the spectrum, and so, in the interests of keeping the log out of dialogue, let us examine some of the aspects of exposition that we might learn how to properly handle this staple of narrative. Now, in first introducing a protagonist, one may wind up describing his character, employing phrases like he was the best pilot in the Air Force, a daring adventurer, and always there for his friends, as if he was a contestant on a game show. Bachelor number one, Chip Carson. A stockbroker, Chip enjoys volleyball on the beach and long walks in the rain. He lists his favorite books as The Money Game and The Profit. It is here where we can learn a lesson from our first concept, show don't tell. Four, it can be immensely desirable to introduce the character in such a way that his actions over the first few chapters or scenes speak for themselves. And yet, even there, one can fall into the trap of using cliches to introduce the protagonist, such as having an up-and-coming superhero display his heroism by saving a woman from being mugged. With this paradox in mind, by far my favorite example of show don't tell comes in the first act of the movie John Wick. For the titular character is introduced neither by having his exploits told, nor having his deadly prowess shown in an inconsequential shootout. No, indeed, he is introduced to us by the mortal dread which his name inspires in the hearts of men, who we can plainly see should have little cause to fear anyone, much less the seemingly mild-mannered Wick. In a brilliant example of intrigue and foreshadowing, it whets our appetites for the action to come, making us wonder who this John Wick could possibly be, and what manner of hell he will unleash upon those who have wronged him. I heard you struck my son. Yes, sir, I did. Yeah, may I ask why? Yeah, well, because he stole John Wick's car, sir, and uh, killed his dog. Next comes, as you know. Now, if you have ever heard a character start a discourse with this phrase, then it is often safe to assume that this talk is purely intended to bring the audience up to speed. Fine thing. First you sell me for 200 bucks, then I'm gonna marry the princess, then you cut in on me. 
Then we're carried off by a desert sheik. Now we're going to have our heads chopped off. I know all that. Yeah, but the people who came in the middle of the picture don't. However, there are several ways to go about solving or mitigating this problem. The first and most obvious is to never use the phrase, as you know. This won't change the fact that you're expositing, but at least you won't be drawing attention to it. That said, one common trick is to have the information in question be directed at a character who, like the audience, needs to be clued into the plot, both functional and plausible, especially when said character is the new guy on the team. However, what about those times when you don't have the luxury of the presence of such a character? Yes, based on the four distinct alien languages inscribed on the wall, we concluded it was some sort of meeting place where these four races would... We all reread the mission reports, Dr. Jackson. Okay, right. In those instances, another technique that can achieve varying degrees of success is to deliver said exposition under the guise of a story recounted by an old friend or an elder reminiscing about the good old days. A choice used to excellent effect in Back to the Future, where Marty's mother reminisces about how she first fell in love with George McFly, which, while still being exposition, was nonetheless easier to swallow because we have all heard stories repeatedly told to us by loved ones. He seems so helpless. Like a little lost puppy. And my heart just went out to him. Yeah, Mom, we know. You've told us this story a million times. You felt sorry for him, so you decided to go with him to the fish under the sea dance. No, no, it was the enchantment under the sea dance. Now we've looked at two ways to deal with exposition, as if it was a problem. However, there is a third option available to us. If the heart is light, the tale is grand, and the character is bombastic. That is, to embrace it and breathe such life into it that it is a joy to hear. In the audio commentary for Pirates of the Caribbean, Curse of the Black Pearl, the writers told of how Johnny Depp called them out for giving him exposition to deliver. Johnny got the new pages and he comes up to me and goes, I can't believe you're giving me exposition. Guy is canny, guy is sharp. He knew exactly what was going on in that moment. And we said, yeah, okay, it is exposition, absolutely. But we also gave you the word miscreants. And he goes, okay, there's an even trade-off. And so he did it, and he played it in that sing-song light delivery that just made it all work so well. I mean, miscreants. Come on, who wouldn't want to say that? Have you not heard the stories? Captain Barbosa and his crew of miscreants sail from the dreaded Ila de Muerta. Moreover, the writers spoke about how they wanted the characters to tell stories. And therein lies the trick. For whether it was Barbosa's story of the cursed treasure of Cortez, Jack's speech to Will in the jail, or Mr. Gibbs' account of how Jack escaped the island by roping a couple of sea turtles, the perceived exposition was enveloped in the rich piratical talk and energized by the lively spirits of the characters such that rather than a slog of dialogue, whose only purpose was to clue the viewer into the plot, the exposition in these scenes instead became some of the most eminently quotable and memorable lines from the movie. So whether you choose to embrace exposition, disguise it, or dole it out, remember that there is an art to the pacing of a story. And like a character in a spy novel, you can think of exposition as being on a strictly need-to-know basis. If the reader does not need to know, then perhaps we'll be wise to hold off on telling him until it is advantageous to the plot. For it is often useful to consider that as a reader, it can be much more interesting to be given the answer to a question you have been asking, rather than finding yourself being given the answer to questions you did not even know existed. Thank you very much for watching. I hope that this video has been informative or at the very least, pleasant diversion. Until next time.